Hey everyone, so let's move on and start integrating Spring Security in our application. So this is a integrating Spring Security is a complex process and we are going to move ahead step by step. So in this video, this video we are going to focus on default configuration only and then subsequently we are going to customize it. So let's go ahead and see how we can integrate in our application. So as usual, the place to add the dependencies, the start.spring.io, we have Gradle project here, Java, all the this configuration and I need, I want to know the name of the security dependency. So just here, we have this spring security only for now, only this I need it. And if you come here, it is coming here, explore this one. So I wanted this name, all other things are already there in our project and by now we all understand that uh, this starter is going to do all the magic in our application, right? Uh, so we add, we add only this dependency and it is going to add all the related okay, dependencies for us. So let's refresh it. It is going to download all the dependencies for us. So in the meantime, let me show you the one code change that I already have done. So if you see this controller, so far we have seen the endpoint which is creating the user into the system but we have not seen any endpoint which is getting the user from the system so this next endpoint find by email which i have added it uh, offline okay so if you see this so it is the endpoint user find a request param and string email because it is going to take the query param i'm going to show you the uh, exact url in a while so find my email is going to do that it is going to get see this uh, it is going to take that email which user is passing it is going to call the rep uh, it is going to pass that to the same repository that we have find by email so find by email it's something um, you know basics of jpa uh, right so if we write in such a way that uh, find by is actually it is going to be translated into select user select star from this table this entity that is there and email where email equals whatever email we are passing here so this is how it is going to translate in a sql query right so this this is going to give me uh, this is going to uh, uh, hit the database and return me the user by this email that is present in the system right so when if it is present there it is going to return otherwise it is going to throw a user not found exception and when it is returning the user to the client uh, we are not going to uh, show it the password so actually it's our choice uh, based on the requirement but for now i do not want because it is an open-ended uh, uh, it is it is an open-ended um, endpoint it is not secured so i want the password to be masked to be secured that is why i have put it star 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 right and when user not found exception is coming so i should pass the proper exception to the user for that exception handler code is already in place so if you see user service exception handler so all the codes were already there i have added this user not found exception i have created one method for this handler here exception handler it is going to at runtime it is going to identify when this kind of exception is coming user not found exception then this code will be executed and this message will be passed to the user right and this exception handler i already have explained you uh, how it works in detail in previous videos and this is this custom exception that I have created user not found exception you see here and coming coming to service here yeah this is here okay so if I now uh, application is already running so if I go and uh, try to hit this it is going to give me the result here so if you see it is already giving this one so the endpoint will be like this one uh, this is the server address user find and this is the this is the query parent email and this is the exact name so if it is in the system it is going to give me the result otherwise we are going to get a proper error that status not found what is the path that you are requesting user find timestamp and user not found for email id this one okay exact error so now uh, now uh, we are able to access this one so we have uh, we have in we have added our dependency here uh, spring security so let's not add anything custom here i have added this dependency only let's restart this application and what by default our application how it is going to behave now so let's see that so that is the magic um, that is the uh, great thing behind startup security that i have added the this this dependency in the application it is going to secure all the endpoints that are in our system 
by default it is going to secure all the endpoints that are in the system and that is something which is uh, we are expecting by default we should not allow anything in the, into our system yes. so our application is running now let's go ahead and try to hit that endpoint that uh, we were uh, let, uh, we are hitting see now it is asking me to sign in so what is the username and password that we are going to give here so if you see the console here it has already generated a security password for us so if you want to enter into our application we have to use this one so this is the default password uh, uh, default uid that is that it is using as a password so it is going to be the password and by default username is going to be the user only so if i sign in it is going to give me the access to all the endpoints yeah it is not found right so other endpoints if i try to hit it it is going to give me the access so the next time i hit it you are going to uh, it's it's a strange right so earlier it asked me for the password but now it is not asking so the magic is behind how it works actually when first time you are authenticating it it's it's the complex concept if you are first time looking into this one but it's it's uh, like uh, very logical first time when you are authenticating it it is going to ask the username password and then on on that behalf it is going to generate a session a session id and in the first in the response of the first request it is going to send us send to the client in this case it is our browser and subsequently when our client is going to send the request that session id that session token will be in the request and now the backend service which are our user service it is not going to ask the username password if we have that valid session id itself and where that session id is there so if you if you come here uh, it is actually in the cookie so if you come here in the application and come here at the cookies places and this is the here and j session id you see here this is the value of the cookie here right so that is how it is working and it is not asking me the password so let's try to delete this one and enter it now it is going to ask me the password and it is going to be the same that earlier it was okay now we are able to access it and again it added a session id and you can see the session id is different from the previous one because all the time uh, every time a user is authenticated new session id is created so we are going to see this uh, in detail in subsequent videos how we are going to customize it and if we do not want it to work and we want to introduce our own token you know the jwt json web token is there how we can integrate how we can use that so these things we are going to see in in step by step in in further video so this is the one way that we are securing uh, our application all the endpoints are secured even if even if if you are going to if you go to postman and try to create the user it is not going to allow us to create the user itself okay and uh, as if now it is using this generated security password but let's let's take a step ahead and try to say that i want to introduce a static username and password how we can do that so let's stop the i do not basically i do not want to use this one so let's go one step ahead and see how we can customize a static username password so if you see here uh, this this is our application here so we have spring then there is one property that is spring security dot user dot name that i have to add here user dot name so you see you see uh, by default it has user as a default i want to customize it right so let's say name it green not not this one okay and again and the password that i want to give here learner so this instead of using the password that is generated at the console so let's start the application i think that user generated password that was coming in the console itself it should not come because we already have configured our password here and the system is going to use that now you see our application is started but no default security password was generated because now we have configured this one so if we now go and try to access this one it is going to uh, take the same password that we have configured green learner it is going to allow us uh, to access that endpoint 
so this is the one level of uh, customization that we can do uh, by configuring this one we have not uh, created any class or any configuration that is the next step that we are going to have yeah i think i think that's the basic idea about the integrating spring security by default it is going to secure all, all of your application and it is up to us how we are going to customize this security parameter now we have next step like username password we have created and user is itself going to give the password that we are hashing and password so end end goal is that we are going to use the user details that is stored in the database itself which we are going to achieve step by step so that's all about this video further customization we are going to see in the next videos let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video any confusion any doubt let me know that in the comment section so if you like the video please don't forget to share and subscribe this one okay so i'll see you in the next one take care bye bye